Have you ever been in a dating situation and you felt like you weren't sure if the man was really feeling you or not? You might be in that situation right now. And that's why I'm going to break down for you five mixed signals that men will give while dating. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Keeping It Real with Keandra. I am your host, licensed marriage and family therapist, Keandra Jackson. Now this can be a little bit tricky because we've all been in a little dating situation where things just weren't crystal clear as we would like for them. Why? Why it gotta be like that? Why does it have to be like that? But nevertheless, I'm gonna break down for you guys five different mixed signals that men will give you in the dating phase. Hopefully this will give you a little bit more clarity. So put in the comment section, if a man you were dating did any of these mixed signal things to you and put which one, because I think we all need to know that we are not alone on this dating journey. So let's get into it again. As I always say, this list isn't exhaustive. Of course, it's only five things, but I think these are the main things that I wanted to convey to you. And that's going to help you along on this journey. And by the way, of course, you know, I got a little bonus to add to the end as well. So stay tuned for that. So so the first mixed signal that a man will give to you while dating is hot and cold behavior. Now, I think we've all been here before where they're just dousing you and oozing you with all of the attention, all of the text messages, all of the dates, all of the blah, 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 phone conversation, video chats. Everything is in place and you're like, okay, this is going a little well. You're getting a little, <laughs> this is going a little well. I'm here for this. Like this is promising, right? And then out of nowhere, boom, out of the blue, okay, things shift. He's not as responsive anymore. He kind of is not trying to plan dates, not trying to see you. It's literally the opposite behavior from what he was doing. Now, we don't have time to sit here and psychoanalyze why he's doing what he's doing and what the reason behind that is. And it may or may not have been something that you have done. But if this is happening with you, this is absolutely a signal, a mixed signal that a man will send. And to be honest, it can create some type of distance, aloofness, just kind of just leaving you in a space where you're not certain about what's going on. And you know what I always say, we're big on effective two-way communication on this channel. So instead of being like, well, it is what it is, F him, I'm over it, I'm gonna block him, have the conversation. Be a woman and say, hey, boo. <laughs> In the beginning phases, you were all about me, you were planning dates, you know, you were doing all of the things. And then I felt like something shifted and switched. Like, what is that about? And give him the opportunity to explain it to you. Give him the opportunity to say, oh yeah, I'm not really feeling you like that, or I met somebody else, or man, something happened in my family and I just needed to take some time, or you know, I've been busy at work. Whatever the explanation is, whether you feel like it's an excuse or not, give him the opportunity to share and explain that to you. And if it's a valid reason, and if he's telling the truth, and if it's something that you can rock with, then you guys can move forward. Now, if it's the opposite, you think he lying and you know, all of those things, then this just may not be a dating relationship that you may want to continue. And you probably should think about ending things right now. The next type of mixed signal is mixed plan and ambiguous invitations. <laughs> so this is what I'm saying by this mixed plans, meaning he not 100% sure what y'all doing, when y'all doing it. If y'all going on date night, he might be canceling a lot on you, rescheduling a lot on you or canceling at the last minute on you. He may say, oh yeah, we gonna go here, but he never gives a date, a time, a location or any of those things. Like he is kind of just not crystal clear when it comes to his plans for you and with you. And one thing that I know about us women, <laughs> we love a man who can plan. And not only a man who can plan, but a man who actually stays and sticks to his plan and fulfills what he's supposed to do. It's one thing to say, hey, babe, we going out Friday night, get ready, get dressed. It's another thing to be like, hey, babe, we going out Friday, get dressed, be ready. I'm coming to pick you up. Don't worry about the restaurant. I got it. I already made reservations. <laughs> like I got flout. Like it's different when it's just planning and fulfilling through with that plan. So if a man is doing this, it's definitely a mixed signal. And it could be that he's just not a good planner, or it can be he's just not a good planner when it comes to you. 
<laughs> because he may not like you like that and see something long term with you. And instead of being a man and breaking it off and saying, hey, this isn't working, he's probably giving that attention to some other woman. He's probably going in a different direction and he doesn't know how to be crystal clear about that. But if this is something that you value as a woman, like I like a man who's a planner. I like a man who can take the lead, even if it's something small, like a date or, you know, something of that nature. If that's something that you value on a high level, baby, being with a man who does not value that is going to frustrate the heck out of you. And you're going to be in a situation where you're like, "Mm -mm." every week for date night, you're going to be annoyed and pissed. And you're going to have that to be an ongoing pattern in your relationship. And if they're doing that now in the dating phase, what are they going to do when you get into a relationship? What are you going to do when you get married? Like, it's going to be the same pattern. So this is why we got to nip stuff at the butt or in the butt, whatever, whatever the proper analogy is or the cliche is, nip it early on. So these things don't even have the capacity to develop and evolve into something raggedy into a whole big old monster. The third mixed signal that a man will give you while dating is flirting with other women or dating others. Now this may be a little controversial because some women don't care if, or some people in general don't care if the guy that they're dating is dating multiple people because people date differently. Some people date just one-on-one. They only can be intentional about one person at a time. And then there's other people who do what we call quantum dating. And that's when you date a whole bunch of people at one time to weed out who's going to be your partner and who you want to be with. And it really just kind of speeds up the process versus doing the one-on-one situation. So depending on what boat you're in and how you manage your dating life, this may or may not be a big deal to you, but for some people it is, right? So if you're in a dating phase and you're basically exclusively dating someone and you're finding that they're flirting with other people, they going on other dates, it might make you feel a type of way. I'm the type of woman from personal experience that I don't care who else you dated (laughs) because my goal is to be more focused on you than more focused on the other woman, right? Like my goal is to make sure that me and you are vibing out. I'm not going to be saying, well, what did you do with her and where did y'all go and what happened? I do not care because at the end of the day, if we're supposed to be together, Chicky baby, old girl is gonna eventually fall off anyway. So that's none of my concern. So to take it back to the whole flirting situation, we have to remember that it's like online flirting and in-person flirting. Now, you know social media then turns up this whole flirting situation on a completely different level. Even things that may not even really be considered flirting can be misconstrued as flirting, right? You liking a person's post or putting too many emojis under it or watching somebody's stories and they're like, oh, see, he been watching my stories and see, he made a comment. And like, it can be extra versus that person just genuinely liking the person's content on their page. So it can be a little tricky and that's why you have to have conversations about what is comfortable with you in regards to flirting and dating and where you guys are at in regards to that. Again, it goes back to having those effective two-way conversations that are absolutely necessary to make sure that you are on the same page and that you guys are going in the same direction. The fourth mixed signal that a man may send while dating is expressing sexual interest, but still no commitment. I don't even have to say too much on this one, to be honest with you, is basically saying like he wants to have sex with you, do some type of sexual activity with you, but he doesn't want or see a commitment with you long term, meaning he don't want to be in a relationship with you. He don't see you as marriage material. He's just engaging and having fun and getting what he needs to get in this phase. Now, you can either choose not to give it to him, right? Depending on what your your standards are and what you want to do and how you want to navigate. Or you might be with it and be like, okay, cool. I'm here for like, let's get in some sexual activity. But if that's the case, you got to make sure that you know by you giving your body to this person and they don't want to be with you, you can't be salty and mad about that, right? You have to agree with the process essentially because if not, then you need to not have sex with him. No matter what he does, no matter how much he initiates, no matter how you cannot have sex with him if you want more and he doesn't, it's not going to work out, boo. So basically, yes, this is a mixed signal, but you have to figure out what your values are, what your standards are, and if what you're willing to put up with in this situation, because I've even had situations too where it's like, we ain't on the same page with that. Like, you want to smash and I'm trying to get married. Like, he said, no. 
The fifth type of mixed signal that a man may send while dating is being warm and private, but cold in public. It kind of goes back to number one where we talk about that hot and cold behavior, but for this one, he's all affectionate and lovey-dovey and hugging you and kissing you and holding hands and, you know, massaging your feet and, you know, doing all of the things behind closed doors. But when y'all get in public, whether that is just going to the store, whether that's going out to dinner, going to a movie, whatever the circumstance is, he's very distant. He don't really touch you like that. He's not really trying to be physically affectionate. Like, what is the deal? It's a mixed signal because it almost feels like, and I talked about this in one of my other videos, almost feels like he's ashamed of you. Like, he don't wanna be out in public and run into somebody that y'all may know individually or mutually, and then they have to explain who this person is. Who are they to you? Why are you with them? What is the deal? So to avoid that from happening, he keeps that distance. And so this is absolutely a mixed signal. It happens often, but it's again, something that you have to address head on and mention, hey, when we at the crib, you all up over me. But as soon as we get into the grocery store, as soon as we're out to dinner, you 10 feet away from me, like we're strangers. What's up with that? You need to figure it out for sure. And last but not least, number six, the bonus, which is the sixth mixed signal that a man may give you while dating, is introducing you to his family and friends or not introducing you to his family and friends. Now this is twofold depending on how the person operates. I have seen people who literally avoid introducing the person that they are dating to any of their family and friends, right? And I think that that's a good rule of thumb. If you don't know where this relationship is going, if you don't know if it's gonna be long-term, if you don't know if it's going to go anywhere, okay? It's best to not try to introduce that person to everybody all over the time. Because what's gonna happen when this ends? Then now you got all your families and friends being like, hey, what happened to Bonquisha? And what happened to so-and-so? <laughs> I say about Quisha. I cannot with the examples I've given today. But people are going to be saying, like, what happened to that person? And you done already moved on and start dating somebody else. So not introducing the person you are dating to family and friends can be a great practice. But I've also seen people do the opposite. I've seen people bring all of their booze, every chick that they're dating, whether it's a new one every every three days, okay? They got it on clockwork, on rotation, bring it around to the family barbecue, to Thanksgiving dinner, to Christmas, to New Year's party. Like, sir, <laughs> ma'am, why you gotta bring a new boo every three seconds over here? Like, we do not have time for that. And I'm gonna get on my nephew about this. He's in a committed relationship now, but I remember there was a phase where I felt like he was going through a whole bunch of different dating situations and he was introducing me and our extended family to a new chick all the time. And I'm like, bruh, do not introduce me to nobody else that you're dating unless you are serious about that person. I'm not meeting nobody else. <laughs> so that is just an example of how it can be twofold, right? And again, that could be mixed signals because you might feel like, okay, the person's not introducing you, so maybe they don't see a future with you. But then it can be mixed signals when they are introducing you to family and friends. And you're thinking, oh, yeah, this is going somewhere. I met his mama. I met his auntie. I met all of the people. Like, I'm in good standing when he do this for all the women all the time. So my quick final thoughts on this is literally something that I've already mentioned. Communicate, over communicate in this area, right? To avoid you getting your heart broken, to be in your feelings. If you're seeing some things that are not aligning, if you're seeing some things that are not congruent, it's okay to speak up. We have to get better at our communication skills, y'all, because this is what makes the dating scene so much more dangerous because people are assuming things, they're not talking about stuff. Well, I thought you did this and you didn't do this and I that made me feel. How about you have a conversation with that person and if they're able to do that, you might could work it out. But if they're not, if they don't have that skill set, then you know that this is a person that you probably shouldn't be dating anyway. So thank you for watching another episode of Keeping It Real with Keandra, and I will see you next time. Bye.